Okay, for those who are doing open houses. Yes, you want to learn it, right? And if you don't put a deadline on when you're going to do it and when you have it, you have your open house scheduled, guess what's going to happen? Here's the reality of this. So I can show you how to do an open house in about 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And do it correctly. Right. Today's Wednesday. Is that right? Am I right on that Wednesday? Okay, good. All you need is Thursday, Friday to do it correctly. Right now, here's the thing about if we are waiting, and this is this is a challenge, right? We want to have everything together and we want to do that before we plan it and all that kind of stuff, right? I want to get you guys closings in the next 30, 60 days. 90 at the most, but 30, 60 would be great, right? So everybody that's here that has an open house, if you don't have one for this Saturday, I want you, you on your calendar, you better have one for next Saturday. Okay, Jamisha, you got that? When does yours go live? It will go live tomorrow. So I will have it on Saturday or Sunday. This week. Fantastic. Okay. You guys get why I'm asking these questions, right? To make sure we're executing. Yes, right? Because this is the whole purpose of these days that we're doing is I may want you guys to have more success than some of you want yourselves to have success. Okay. Which means that if I were in your boat, I'd have one planned for Thursday or Friday or Saturday. Now it's, if you're going to do the door knocking, which of course is part of doing the big mega open house, you're going to want to give yourself at least a day to go do that and knock on 50 to hundred doors to invite them to the open house. And okay? so long, longest term that for those who are doing that and chose have, cho have that chosen should be Saturday. Cause if you do one Saturday and you do it correctly over the next couple of days, guys, you'll have, you, you will have an active client on Saturday. Anybody want that? Put this on your calendar. Go find one that you can do. I know I sound, let's see the D's, the D part's coming out today, right? How how important is the, the, the sign aspect of those mega open houses? The reality is it's very important on the buyer side. Okay. Okay. So what's going to happen is this. So you've got two main pieces of that. You've got the door knock to invite the neighbors. Yep. That's a listing generator. Yeah. You got the sign side. That's a buyer generator. Yeah. Okay. Now, don't forget if it's just listings, don't forget the signs because what happens is the sellers are going to see all of those signs. Nobody else is doing that. And it's going to leave an image in their, in their head. But my issue is that our uh, um, association and our localities won't allow it. Okay. Wow. Okay. But three signs for an open house. Wow. Yeah. And I've seen that a lot. Right. So that means that you're going, your focus is going to be more on the invitations to the neighbors to come in and do that, which is fine. Right. Because here's in the reality of that, when you're, when you're inviting the neighbors, you're saying, Hey, you know, I just wanted to let you know that we're going to have an open house. I'm going around inviting the neighbors. Um, but if you've never seen one, two, three main street, I want you to come in, take a look at it. If, if you're, interested, curious, things like that. And by the way, uh, I'm not sure if you know anybody, but if you did know somebody who were looking to move into the neighborhood, could you please invite them? Now, that whole purpose is twofold for knocking on the door. One is to introduce yourself to the neighbors without soliciting anything, right? Anybody have no solicit signs? I mean, a lot of there's a lot of areas that are strict on those things, uh, although there's there's some funny stories about that. Uh, but you're not soliciting anything. Right. You're just letting the neighbors know. So it's an easy conversation. And it's it's very it's not an intrusive piece of it. Right. And then the other piece of that, too, is who are the number one sources for people that want to move into a neighborhood? 
neighbors, friends. Yeah, you got it. I mean, how many times have you been over to somebody's house that, that you like and said, yeah, I'd like to live here, right? This would be kind of cool. So they know that and you have the conversations with the people. So you're doing multiple things. But Jay, if you concentrate, you may want to expand that number. And instead of doing 50 or 100, you may want to do 150, right? To invite the people that are coming in, bring those postcards, have them the invitation, have them invite things because they're going to do the work for you when they do that. And you're going to be getting in their brain that you're doing things that nobody else does. Because who, who, and who goes and knocks on a neighborhood door when they're doing an open house? Nobody. They don't do it. I mean, the reality is, is they stick a sign in the front yard, one at the nearest corner, and then what happens? They hope somebody walks up to the door. Right? Hey, that's just the reality of that piece of it. Okay. So if you do that now, if you can put signs up, those are huge. The more you can put them up. Jay, let me ask you a uh, clarifying question as well. Can you literally not put them up or can you, are there restrictions on time that they're out? Or do you know that actually? Both. I've seen it. Okay. Both. Yeah. Both. So in one city around here, you can only have one sign, like one open house sign, and it's got to be on the property that's listed. Um, another city is like one on the property and two off, but they can't be on public land. They have to be on private. Another city is not on private, but only on public. And so like our cities around here are nuts. So they are you? Monterey, California. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. Got it. Got anyway, it. And then all of them are only during the time of the open house. So okay. like that's the restriction. You can only have them up during the time of the open house and like, yeah, and the restrictions are nuts. So yeah, see, I like that. I have no, that that's what I tell people to do anyway. Don't put them up yeah. the night before. Don't yeah. leave them up. All that. I mean, you want, you want to go open up the open house. You want to make sure that it's ready and, and lights are on the signs on that. I'll be back at one o'clock or 10 o'clock or whatever it is. Then you want to put the open house signs up, right? That's how that works for those who can put up signs. Why? Okay, so here's what happens. If you put them up, a couple of things on that. If you put them up the night before, it's not open. So people are looking for it to be open, right? Because people that are driving by to look for neighborhoods and look in specific neighborhoods, they're looking now. If you have an open house sign and they show up at the door and it's not open, guess what happens? They're not coming back. Yeah, they and they become a little disgruntled. It's yep. almost like an anti-marketing machine at that point. Yep. You got. I typically get phone calls from people um, asking about the house, like wh what's the house, how much does it cost and all of that, because I usually put mine up. We can put ours up on Friday and then pick them up on Sunday after the. Um... Well, don't do it. Okay. Do it. OK, put them go in, pre prep the open house, make sure that it's ready. Have all the windows open, lights on, all that kind of stuff. Put your sign. I'll be back at 10 o'clock. Right. And then do the signs from that point out, okay? Because what happens is they're going to, fall, when people are really looking to go and look in open houses, they're driving in the neighborhood on Saturday mornings or Sunday afternoons after church or on Wednesday night on the way home from work or Thursday on the way home from work, right? And so their look, if it's open then, they're gonna stop and they're gonna look in it. They may drive by at certain times, but you'll get more participation and more now buyers that are walking in as opposed to just somebody nosy making a phone call. Now, if they make a phone call off, off of a sign, that's fantastic, right? And you're not going to get as many when you do that. And you're going to get what happens if you do it the hour before, when you come back, there's going to be a line out the door already waiting for you to get back because you put your sign up. I'll be back at 10 o'clock. And that's what you want. The and when I do that, I always thought that was last minute. Like I wasn't going to get enough people at that point. No, you'll get plenty, especially when you're putting out fifty directional signs. Oh, I don't have fifty. I've got like eight. Okay, so there's the other piece of the signage, right? If you can, if you're in an area where you can do signs, yeah, I know people are looking at me like, how many? They're looking at me like, you're nuts. 
I, I think it's genius. And like the little ones, the steak ones that just go on the ground. Yeah, unfortunately, I just, I, I'm not allowed. Yeah, absolutely. See, mine, I'll like, cause I plan to do open houses throughout the week. So all of mine have like Monday, Sunday, it has each day of the week on them. If and you, I've got like eight a piece for each day. Okay. If you <laughs> do this correctly, you'll have 25 to 50 people walking through this on a Saturday, Sunday, or Wednesday. And you won't have to do them every day. You could, you could do multiples, but if you also, and here's the other piece, you can get 50 of them. And if you're putting them out an hour before, does it need to say the day on it? Because they're going to follow. We've had people literally follow our signs for 10 miles to get to an open house off of an exit, off of an interstate. It's like, what brought you out? We had to follow your damn signs because we wanted to see where it was and we just couldn't stop. <laughs> Were they looking in that neighborhood? No. Uh -uh. But did it lead to a, a buyer and a seller? It actually led to multiple buyers and sellers. Right. So here's and this is the funny thing. People get nerd when I say 50. Everybody freaks out. But if you think about it. If you've got the right home in the right neighborhood that is that it, that is surrounded by some busy streets, if you, if you have 20,000 traffic going by on a day on a street and you've got 50 signs and you've got them every 100 to 200 yards, do you think you're going to get some traffic? You're going to get a buttload, a ton of traffic. Here's the other piece of that. The other people that you've knocked on the door, and this is where, Jay, unfortunately, right? But if you've knocked on the doors and they're out that morning, what do they see? You. And they're going, holy crap. This person, I've never seen this many signs. How did they do? Why? Really? And if anybody's thinking about selling, guess what they're thinking? I've never seen this before. Okay. Is it the, the sign piece is a pain in the ass. Let's be honest. <laughs> Let me give you the secret to doing that, by the way. All right. Two things. One, remember when I said do an open, if you do an open house like this, you want somebody there with you to do it with you. Okay. So one of you gets in the driver's seat. The other person is in the past, the passenger side rear seat. All your signs are behind the driver's seat. Hazards. Pull over, person in the back seat jumps out with a sign, boom, jumps back in. You go to the 100 yards, put another one. Makes it really easy. Bring another shirt, good pair of shoes, different pair of pants in case you need that if it's really hot and you're in Southern California or in uh, Florida, right? Or Texas. Bring extra clothes because you're going to be nasty if you're the one putting out the signs. Now, here's the other piece. How many of you have teenage kids that can drop no, nobody. Oh, Wendy, maybe. No, no. Okay. All right. How many of you have friends or neighbors that have teenage kids that can drive? Okay, perfect. So guess who you can hire and use as a tax deduction, right? Okay. All right. And then, and they'll do it because they would love to make 15, 20 bucks an hour for like two hours worth of work. 40 bucks if they're in high school and can drive, bring a neighbor, you know, bring somebody that's, the, you know, you got two of them in the house, whatever it is. These are just ways to, we used to do that all the time with that. Okay. But what will happen is if you do the hundred doors, average, whatever it is, Jay, you got to do 500. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> hundred doors. 100 to 150 for you, Jay. That is the that actually is the number for that. Okay. You do that and you put out 50 signs, you will never be below 25 groups walking through that house. Never. Never, never, never. How many of you would like that every time? Do you think you're going to get at least one client out of that? Every time. So let me give you another tip on the open house. How many of you have always been taught to ask them, whoever comes into the open house, if they're working with an agent? 
stop. It's on my little open house sheet that I have them fill out. Okay. Don't ask. I know you're looking at me again going, wait a minute. What do you mean? Okay. Why not? <laughs> I like that question, right? So think about this. When is the number one day for people to go car shopping? Saturday? Nope. Saturday? Nope. Sunday. What day, Philippe? Sunday? Yep. Why? I don't know. I see a lot of people shopping for cars on Sunday. <laughs> Why? Think about it. Wait, go, Kimberly, you're on mute. Is that the sale? Uh-uh. Because there's no salesmen there, so they can go look and not be bothered. Because they're all closed on Sundays. Right. <laughs> so there's nobody there to bother them or bug them, they think. And so that's why people go. They are all closed. Exactly. <laughs> they're all closed, right? So, and and here's the thing. If you go shopping, car has anybody been car shopping lately? Yeah. No? Okay. So anybody remember going car shopping? Okay. Yeah. Right. So did you go on a day that salespeople were there? Yes. All right. So the first time, so they come running across the parking lot to meet you, don't they? <coughs> and they no, start talking and start talking to you. And what do you do? <laughs> just looking, just browsing. We are trained and we have our script as a buyer. And I say buyer as a consumer, that buying, selling houses, everything, just like we do when we're going car shopping. It is no different. So when you walk in, when somebody walks into your open house and, and the first thing you say, which many agents do, are you working with an agent in some form or another? What is the first thing that that person is going to, is trained in their mind to say? They'll say yes. Yes. Because then what happens? You know, when you look at an agent, here's what you look, here's, here's your face as an agent when they say yes. Okay. It is, isn't it? All of a sudden you're going, darn it. <laughs> right? You know, I found, I always follow that question up when they say they have an agent. I say, oh, great. What's their name? See, <laughs> I don't even go there. Don't even go there. Right? Because here's what's happening. If they're walking into an open house, could they have an agent? Sure, they could. Do, do they have a buyer's agency agreement signed? More than likely, they don't. Right? So here's the other piece. If you allow them to come in and get comfortable in the open house property, this is for anything that you're doing. This is this is the same thing if you're doing a workshop, if you're doing uh, an event, if you're doing anything like that, right? Let them come in and get comfortable. Be the source of information. The same thing if you're doing, I mean, anybody big on YouTube and all of that, right? I mean, Ash, right? You get leads on YouTube, but what you have to do first? You provide value, right? Yeah. It's a trust issue before they actually give you their, it's no different in an open house, no different in an event. If you're the one that's there and all of a sudden they become comfortable with you and they trust you, guess what they're going to do? Well, more than likely, the other agent's never going to come up because they probably don't ha really have one. And if they trust you more and they don't aren't committed to another one, guess what happens then? You have a client. You got it. Absolutely. Can I, can I add something to that? Yeah, go ahead. Because this is actually what, so my first transaction from an open house, which was my second transaction ever, was be, they were already working with an agent. And what I did differently, and they knew I was brand new. I was very honest about that, <laughs> which I probably shouldn't have been. But um, what the reason why they ended up going with me was because they came to my open house. I let them browse. I didn't try to vet them. They mentioned that they had an agent. I said, okay, no problem. Let me know if you have any questions. I then offered after the open house was done, if they would like, I could show them other properties in the area that are similar to the one that I was holding open. And they loved that. And so we actually did that. We went and looked at three other houses right down the street. One of them we walked to, 
And they ended up going with me because of that extra value. Um, and then another helpful tip, this is kind of like a side note, but I also go to the surrounding businesses of the open house and I let them know what I'm doing. I drop off a couple of business cards and then I grab menus because like, well, like if it's restaurants or whatever, or, or if it's some type of business that, um, is not a restaurant, get some of their business cards and I display them with all of my open house stuff, which a lot of people who are either not from the area or moving from out of state really like. And then you're, the businesses think that you're supporting them and now you have a business to business meeting. <laughs> so, um, that was a lot of stuff that really helped me when I first got started. Yeah, that's, that's it. That's our purpose. It's, it's the, remember you're in the business of communication, right? Everything that you do is about communication and what you're communicating with and how you're doing it. So if you're doing that, if you're providing the information and when you're, you know, Meg, you brought up a perfect thing. I will always have a three ring binder with comparables from the neighborhood and others that are similar to that, right? In other neighborhoods, but I'm going to have the price point below and the price point above. Because once they get to you and you ask them the question, you know, hey, on a scale of one to 10, can you see yourself living here? Or can you see, is this the house for you to make a home? You know, whatever it is that you want to say, you're going to get one of two answers, right? You're either going to get a yes. How many times do you actually get a yes? Not often, right? Or you're going to get the other answer, which is what? No, this is not it. Small price. That's right. So then the question becomes, what's it missing? What are you looking for? And if you have the other ones that are there, that is the immediate opportunity to take them back and say, you know, I know exactly what you're looking for here. Come on over here. Let me show you. And you've got that. So then the piece is, have you seen these? Well, guess what happens when they haven't seen them? You know, we finish our open house at noon. I'm going to go pick up the signs. I can actually schedule showings with you at one o'clock. Would you like to go see these today? Now what happened? Do you just pick up the yeah. yeah, you just picked up a client, didn't you? Right? Yep. And that buyer ended up selling last year through me as well, which yeah. was awesome. So good follow you get, up. Good. Yeah. You're you're <laughs> one of you're one of 17% that follows up. 17%, you know, 83% of agents don't follow up with past clients. You guys realize yeah. that? I'm I learned that. that <laughs> what was that? I'm part of that 83%. I have to get better about following you, up. You are not, you, obviously you're not alone, right? <laughs> I mean, you're not. My, one of my best friends sold me our house the last time we, not this current time, the last time we moved. Never, cop, never kept, kept us on the list. He was one of my best friends. We moved in October, closed in December on a new house, sold ours there in October. I got a call in January. Dude, when did you move? Did you sell your house here? I, yeah, two of my clients sold with another agent after I helped them buy it because I didn't follow up. So again, yep. I have to get better about that. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, let's automate that, right? Yes, you want to make calls and you have got all of you. Here's the other downfall that all of you need to spend a little bit of time. And I think we talked about this on Monday, 30 minutes a day for two weeks, setting up your CRM. Buyer campaign, seller campaign, sphere, and past client campaign. It's the only three you need. 